What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is The Blacklist, Season 9, Episode 1, The Skinner. So I wanted to come back to the show for two reasons. In keeping with my current schedule, I've just done my two Star Wars shows, so returning to another show that's not Star Wars. The Blacklist I chose, one, because I'm almost done. I've got two seasons left, and actually the tenth season I saw was about to drop on Netflix within the next few weeks. So... It works out well that I'll probably be getting done with Season 9 just as Season 10 is coming out. So it works out well there, but also 7 and 8 were not fantastic. They were okay. Some of the some of the writing in it I felt got a little sloppy, got a little weird. I was just I was not a fan of the last two seasons and I I'm a big fan of this show. I think it's probably one of the best written shows that I've seen. But the last two seasons did not really exemplify that. I felt like there were too many instances where they were writing things to happen because they needed it to happen for that season. But I felt like the the reasons that they gave didn't really back it up very well. So now, coming into season nine, obviously, you know, we had the big shocking ending of season eight where Liz died. And I don't really know what to expect from here on out. Like, I don't know what they plan to do with the show. I mean, I'm sure there's still some secrets about Reddington that we don't know yet. They seem to imply that maybe there was a possibility that he might actually be Katarina, which I, I don't know how that would work. I mean, I know it might be possible, but it still feels a little weird if that is the case. So I'm, I'm assuming we're going to be figuring out the whole truth about who Reddington is, why he's done everything that he's done outside of just trying to help Elizabeth, why he has that connection with her. I'm guessing we'll get to that point at, at some point in these final two seasons. But also, I don't know, it, it is kind of interesting to see now that the task force has been disbanded because that was the one thing keeping them all together was you've got Reddington giving them people to track down, but he was only doing it because Liz was there. And now that she's gone, now it feels like, well, there's no reason to continue doing this. So yeah, I don't know. I, I don't exactly know what the plan is from here on out, but... As far as this first episode goes, pretty solid start. You know, we've got Dembe getting hurt, working as an FBI agent, which I think that's a great <laughs> addition for him to be an FBI agent now. And that brings the whole team back together. And there were a lot of really good moments in this. You know, we see everybody kind of dealing with their own personal lives at the moment. We've got Cooper watching Agnes. Uh, Park is now training FBI agents because, you know, her new husband doesn't want her out in the field. We've got Aram is trying to, I guess, do a startup company with a friend of his. They need some financial backing. Wrestlers, just a mechanic out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I, it's a pretty fun, I say middle of nowhere. I'm pretty sure he was in Detroit. But anyways, it's a pretty fun setup and it's fun to see everybody kind of coming back into the fold and I guess giving up some of the, the stuff that they had before. Overall, I think it's a great setup. The only real issue that I think I had in all of this is the stuff with the ROM. <laughs> and that's just because, I don't know, it felt a little too silly at times. Like, he's he's giving this big presentation, and of course Cooper calls him right then in the middle of it. And so then the guy leaves. But then, he's like, no, I want to do right by my friend, so I'm actually going to go to this guy's house, give him the presentation... And actually tell him what's going on. Tell him why it was so important that I took that call. And then, of course, Cooper calls him right then again. He's like, hey, I need your help with something. It just it felt a little too sitcom-y for me. But it was still good. And ultimately, it kind of worked out. But, of course, his friend's like, yeah, he, he, wants, to, he wants to see the presentation right now. Oh, well, I've actually got to go do something. So it, it still feels like it might not all work out. I don't know. I hope they don't spend too much time on it. But overall, I think it was fine for this. It was fine to have those moments, you know, even with Park, where she's basically lying to her husband, but by the end of it, she comes clean because she can't just be living on these lies. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just working in the office while she's out putting her life in jeopardy. So I think it's a really fun setup. And as far as the Skinner goes, I mean, don't really know where all this is going to lead. I'm assuming it's probably going to lead to something bigger because... We're going to need the team to get back together at some point. <laughs> uh, but I think it's a it's a good starting point. It's good to see, again, where everybody is after the events of the final episode of Season 8 and how everybody is kind of being pulled back in by 
you know, what happened to Dembe, which I think is a good reason. If it were just, hey, there might be something going on with this one thing that we were working on before, I feel like that would be a little too weak. So the fact that it's Dembe got hurt, and he's somebody that he connects both sides. You know, he was, I think he's somebody that the FBI, everybody on the team, they really respected him especially now that he's actually an FBI agent, I think there's a, a mutual respect there. But, of course, he's working for Reddington. So that mutual connection there, I think, is a, a strong starting point to bring everybody back. Um, so I thought that was very clever the way they did that. As far as Reddington is concerned, you know, we see... It's a little weird. It's a little weird to see him like this. I, I do think a lot of that comes down to the fact that he went through a lot of probably depression and <laughs> I I mean just thinking about everything he was going through he was dying at the end of last season he had a serious health problem which we still don't really know actually did they talk about what that was I don't remember now I, I know it was some rare like by vi not virus uh, genetic thing I think that was killing him that was incurable so he's dealing with that, and then everything that happened with Elizabeth, of course, her turning on him, and then her finally realizing the truth, but then she dies. I mean, all of that, that's got to be a lot. And so he's in a very different spot now. He doesn't seem as confident. He doesn't seem quite the same. He had that one moment where he pulls up and gives the one guy a ride, and that that scene felt a little bit more, I guess, the, the Raymond Reddington that we know. But it's definitely not this. Like, he doesn't want to be a part of all of this. He wants to leave it all behind. But I do like the speech the wrestler gives him at the end, basically saying, hey, no, this this is what Liz died for. You know, this blacklist of yours. So, you know, I don't want to be here any more than you do. I don't even want to see your face. But I'm willing to because it's what she would have wanted. I think that was a good scene. And even though I'm still not the biggest fan of them, like, putting wrestler and Liz together as a couple and making this like this huge love story and thing. I, I'm not a big fan of all that. I still don't feel like they had that sort of romantic connection. I felt it was more familial brother sister connection, but that's my own personal opinion. Obviously, I'm sure a good section of the fan base probably shipped them together because I mean, they're both attractive people and they work together and that's all most fan bases need <laughs> these days. But Despite that, I do like his speech. I do like what he said. I think it's very poignant. And it's something that if they were not a couple by the end of it all, I don't think this speech would have carried the same weight. So I can at least appreciate the fact that they use that in a clever way, in a way that makes sense, and does lend a lot of weight to Reddington coming back to help out the team. So, yeah, I'm excited to see how this all comes to a conclusion, and I'm also excited to see how this is going to lead to two more seasons from here on out. But... All that being said, that's it for the first one on episode two. I'll see you there. And now episode two, the Skinner conclusion. So pretty straightforward, in my opinion. You, know, you got Reddington has his secrets. He has his reasons for what he's doing. We don't know what they are yet. We'll probably figure them out as the season goes along. There's some stuff that's left in mystery. There's some stuff he's pulling behind the scenes that we're not seeing just yet. It's got a lot of that mystery and intrigue that I love about this show, so... All in all, I mean, a fantastic episode, I think, to kick off this season. I really don't have a whole lot of, like, notes about it, if I'm being honest. Like, this was just, it was a good, solid episode. I liked all the stuff with the Skinner and how he utilized the, the older, uh, I guess, iterations of the Skinner to oust the new guy that was doing all this awful stuff. I thought it was very clever. The scene where the, the lady was asking him to make out with her, that was... That was a little weird, but outside of that, I mean, it was all, it's kind of what I expected from Reddington, and it feels like it's almost a a return to form for him. Like, I, <laughs> I will admit, even though I've not seen the John Wick films, I know that whole, you know, I'm thinking I'm back thing. I've seen people quote it before. I feel like that, that's very appropriate for <laughs> how Reddington just sort of came in and just, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. It, just, it was... Almost a little too perfect how it sort of, in my mind, coincides. Again, not having seen it, but knowing the speech, I think he could have made that exact speech and it would have fit perfectly. But, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what what he's going to be looking into. I'm assuming there's something going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of yet that he found out about. 
I don't know if Panna Baker is going to be involved or not. It is kind of interesting that he goes to her, and I don't know what he... I don't know what exactly he used to get the task force back. Like, what, what does he have dirt on her? Does he have stuff to offer her? I don't know. And maybe there is something with the the blacklist or the current task. I don't know. Maybe there is something to look into. Like, maybe there is something happening that we don't know about that she does, and Reddington offered to solve it for her, but he needs the task force and the blacklist again. I don't know. It's it's pretty interesting though. I'm. Excited to see where it's going to go from here. As far as, I mean, the, the team is concerned, not a whole lot happened there. You know, we had one phone call between Park and Peter, but that it was very short. And I do kind of feel like that's probably going to be something we tackle later on down the season. Is They're probably going to get into a fight about what she's doing. He's not going to like it, blah, blah, blah. Are they going to break up? I, I don't know. Probably. <laughs> but... Yeah, I, it's it's a good setup. I'm excited to see more. And yeah, that's about all I got for this episode. So on to the third one. I'll see you there. Finally, episode three, the SPK. Again, another solid episode. The only things I have really to talk about are the stories with Aram and with Wrestler. Because uh, the main case in this one, I think, is really good. And I'm excited to see where this goes going forward because it's really starting to develop this relationship between Dembe and Reddington that I wasn't really sure if we were going to get, but as this episode went along, I kind of realized this is what it's leading to, is that now that Dembe is an FBI agent, now his duties are a lot more complicated. Because <laughs> obviously he's still friends with Reddington, and he wants what's best for him, but he can't just turn a blind eye to what he's doing anymore because he has a duty to the job. And it's really interesting to see what they're doing with it just in this first episode where we actually tackle that. So I, I wonder how else that's going to evolve as the season goes along. But the two things that I do want to discuss, because I'm not really sure how I feel about it. First of all, with Aram. This is one that, I don't know, I kind of feel a little unsure about what they're doing with Aram because it kind of feels like we're pushing this to the side very quickly, this whole idea of him starting this business with his friend, and I don't know, it just, it came and went very quickly. You know, he gets this offer, the offer comes through, it's a lot of money, it's really, it looks like it's a good thing, and then it just goes away. He decides, no, I'd rather stay and help people. I don't know, I feel like, I, I understand his decision, I'm not saying that I wanted him to make a different decision, because... Yeah, it makes sense why he would want to stay, especially after what he did to help the people today and stopping the bomb and all of that. But I feel like there was hardly much of a, I guess, a story here. Like, we're three episodes in. These first three episodes, that's been his main story, has been starting up this business with his friend, and now we're just done. They get the offer, he decides, I'd rather save lives, and we're done. That feels a little quick. So I don't know if there's something else here that we're not going to see. I think his you know, his parents, I, I feel, are going to be pretty disappointed based on how excited they were for him. So I don't know if we're going to have more to talk about. But if we don't, I feel like this was kind of a wasted story. I feel like you could have done a bit more with it. Kind of actually brought up more of a, a dialogue about it instead of just, well, here's something exciting. But here's a counterpoint to that, and we're done. <laughs> He's going to go with this counterpoint and say, yeah, saving lives is more important, and we're done. I don't know. Just, again, something that I'm not sure how I feel about it, and it'll depend on whether we do discuss it more throughout the season or if we're just done with the story. But the stuff with Wrestler, we've seen Wrestler go through some dark points. We've seen him deal with some issues in the past. So I'm not saying that him possibly being a drug addict is something that I'm like, no, I can't believe they do that to him. But, I will say, I don't really know how I feel about how he's acting about it all, because, on the one hand, it makes sense from a, a character standpoint, because he has been through a lot. Again, as much as I'm not a fan of him and, be, him and Liz being a thing, they were. And so losing her would have done a number on him. You know, it's somebody that he felt like he could trust. It's somebody that he was very close to. 
it would do a number on him. And so him becoming a drug addict, I'm not saying I don't see that happening. But the way he's acting about it, you know, the way he's almost kind of, I don't know, a little arrogant about it, kind of makes me not like him. And even just the way he's talking down to Dembe, it adds to that feeling of, dude, why are you being so arrogant right now? Like they, It feels like they've really written him as kind of a douchebag for these first couple episodes. And I'm not really a fan of it. You know, I understood when he when he had that sort of holier than thou mentality earlier on in the series, it kind of made sense because he was an FBI agent through and through. He was somebody who didn't like to even think about bending the rules. Working with a guy like Reddington kind of disgusted him. But as the show went along, we saw that he kind of grew out of that, especially the more he personally had to make those tougher decisions that did maybe bend the rules just a little bit, we saw he changed, and he realized that sometimes that's necessary if you want to save lives, if you want to get the job done. Sometimes you can't work wholly within the laws because some of the laws are very restrictive, and sometimes things happen that you can't, you can't stop if you're just working within the, the set laws and everything. So I, I feel like he started to see that as the, season, as the seasons went on, as the series progressed. And so to see him kind of regress a little bit, I don't know. I, again, it's not like he's sitting here saying that, oh, you guys are all you know horrible for what it, it feels more, more so as if he is looking down on everybody else. Like again, he's, he's chewing out Dembe because he feels like he can't trust him. But here he is, and he's apparently using drugs, and he finds a way to fake a drug test. Like, that, for me, it makes him very hypocritical. Like, obviously, if Dembe was doing the same thing, and that, that would be obviously hypocritical. But this feels hypocritical in a way that is, I'm doing something that's wrong. I'm trying to lie to people. I'm trying to, to lie to get my way. But let me call out you because you used to do the same thing, but you're not anymore. But I'm still going to think that you are because you used to. I don't know. It Maybe I'm the only one that feels this way, but it really makes him unlikable in my eyes. And he's somebody that I... He's a character I've really enjoyed throughout the series. Because he was... It was kind of like a, a... If you think about a comedy duo, like a straight man and a, a clown... It was kind of like that, except in a more serious sense, where you've got the criminal, but then you've got the straight-laced... I, I think White Collar did it really well, too. You know, having the FBI agent who's very much, I'm going to do my job and I want to stick to the rules, and he has to work with this guy that he's been chasing for years who likes to work outside the rules sometimes. And it was a fun little duo. That's kind of how I felt about Wrestler and Reddington. You know, that, that feeling of... He doesn't do what I like, but he gets the job done. So I'm going to work with him for now, but I'm not going to like it. And kind of how that dynamic changed throughout the series. I think they've done a good job with it. So that's why I'm a little more on the... I'm not really a fan of what they're doing with Wrestler right now. Because it does feel in some ways like he has regressed. And I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like it when a character regresses. Even if the the reasoning has more to do with what happened with, happened with Liz... Even if that is why he's regressing, I don't feel like I wanted to see a regression. I'd rather see him maybe, it's not so much he looks down upon people, even though he's doing the wrong thing. It's more so he just, he doesn't like Reddington because of what happened with Liz. And so his connection to Dembe, maybe that's why he's having trouble with him. But it feels more so like he he just doesn't trust Dembe. Like he, do, he thinks Dembe is doing something evil and wrong and behind the scenes dirty even though he's got no real reason to he just thinks oh because he used to work with Reddington it, it doesn't feel quite right it doesn't feel justified in my opinion so again maybe I'm just misreading it maybe I feel this way and nobody else does I don't know but that's my own personal opinion but like I said these first three episodes it's got me excited to see more and I think that's something that season seven and eight didn't really have for me is I was not excited to see what stupid thing was Liz going to do next. You know, what stupid thing was she going to do? What annoying thing was she going to do? How was Reddington going to be stupid in the moment so that way Liz could stay on top even though 
There's no reason she should stay one step ahead of Reddington. There were just so many moments that kind of made me go, oh, I gotta watch another one of these. And that's kind of unique, I will say, for the, the Blacklist. Because most of the seasons, I'm excited to see what's coming next. I'm excited to see what next step are we going to take, what new mystery are we going to uncover. And so far, that's what this season has brought me. So in that case, I am looking forward to more, and I hope you guys are too. With all that being said, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these first three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe, feature the Blacklist reviews, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace out.